This week on my HO Scale UP Heartland Division, we've got scrap piles, DOD loads, and whole car graffiti. So stay tuned to find out all about what's new on the layout this week. First thing I want to show you this week is this whole car graffiti. It's an exact rail. Trinity Reefer, a uh, beautiful car, was custom made by Definitive Projects. I believe there was about 35 of those released. Also came with a sticker pack, pretty cool, and a signed picture of when they were doing the actual car graffiti. So I just couldn't pass that up. I also want to show you these DOD flat car loads. I got these from Radisson McGuire. I was lucky enough to uh, pick those up from them, and they're awesome as always. And I found this 81 foot depressed center flat car at the local train show. It was about the only thing I found there uh, to my liking, which that's okay. They had a lot of older stuff and a lot of larger scale stuff. But I came across that at a good price and picked it up. Almost forgot to mention my Amherst wristbands came in. So hope to see you guys up there Saturday. January 28th and Sunday, January 29th. Post in the comments if you're going to be going. One thing I decided to tackle this week was the area behind the main line closest to the backdrop in the area of the BRC shops and Simplify Sand and Gravel. I've decided to go with a scrap yard behind some corrugated fencing and possibly some chain link fence. To start, we're just going to lay out some pieces of this Walther's corrugated fence kit just to see how much coverage we can get with one kit and it's not a whole lot so we're gonna have to figure something out another thing I made a change to was the placement of this water tower I did have it closer to the edge of the layout towards the backdrop and it really cast some nasty shadows on it so moving it further away is going to help reduce those shadows on the backdrop and make for better pictures and videos. I'm using a pencil to mark the foundations because sometimes if you use a like a sharpie or any kind of ink it's going to bleed through when you go to do your ground cover. As I'm putting this corrugated fence kit together. I'm just going to clip off these bottom pegs as they're meant to go down into the base of the scenery. In this case I've got half inch MDF board so I'm definitely not going to drill holes into the MDF and try to line that up. That's just not going to work and definitely going to make my life a little bit easier when I go to install this. I've got the corrugated fence kit roughed together and laid out on the layout. And I didn't quite have enough with those single Walters kit, so I paired it up with some scrap stuff I had laying around. But I think that'll still be pretty prototypical and work out just fine. Up front here is the gates that will be open to allow a truck to go in. And we'll see what we can put behind it. But first, let's go get these fence panels painted up. And it looks like someone's in my spot. You may have recognized him from an Instagram reel. He thinks this layout is partially his. I've loaded up some aged white and some wood colored paint into the airbrush. And we're just going to see what that gives us. So for this other section of corrugated fence that doesn't quite match the other section, I'm just going to pretend like it was older, so I'm going to paint it a different color. In this case, after doing some Google Map street view, 
searching, I came across a lot of scrapyard fences that were a greenish color. So we're just going to put some olive green and just a little bit of white to soften it up, I guess. Got that mixed up, so we're going to go ahead and spray it and see what it comes out. Gonna clean out the airbrush real quick in this handy little clean out jar. Now that I have the fences painted and I hit them with some matte clear coat, place them about where I think they could go, and I'm gonna test out the clearance with this 89 foot auto rack just to make sure they're not in the way of the main line. Everything looks good, so I'm going to trace the outline of where I want to put the fence and then get them out of the way so we can work on the scrap piles that go behind them. I've got all the fence pieces painted, so now I'm going to put on some graffiti. This is from Micro Scale Decals. It's Irish and Scottish graffiti and uh, one of my favorite sets that they've came out with. Now, love it or hate it, graffiti is part of modern railroading, and uh, I don't think you can see a freight train go by that hardly has any cars or anything that doesn't have graffiti on it. So, especially around the tracks and in this industrial area, I find it fitting that I'm just going to have some graffiti on the fence to the scrapyard that I'm building right now. I'm just going to take a couple pieces that I feel like won't work very well with freight cars and I'm going to steal these and put them on the fence and hopefully it turns out okay. Well, I've got the first decal cut off the sheet and soaking in warm water. I'm going to throw some microset solution on the fence where I'm going to place the decal. Once that's on there, just going to try to find a tweezers and grab the decal out of the water. It's ready to go. So we're gonna slide this off onto the fence. From here, I'm just gonna take some water on my brush Flatten out the decal and start to tap it in between the ridges of the corrugated fence. Being very careful because this decal is pretty fragile, much like all of them. I went ahead and cut a piece of insulation base here. So it fits the backdrop and then I'm just going to kind of follow that fence line in a little bit and trim that foam so we can start the base of our scrap piles. I've carved up some of the insulation and I'm going to use it as a base for the scrap pile. It's going to get covered with aluminum foil, which I'll do here in a minute, but first I'm going to put these pieces together just using some craft tacky glue and then I'm going to let that dry and just carve on it a little bit more to give me some definition. I realize I don't have many scrap pieces to build my scrap pile so I've just found some stuff laying around that I can sacrifice. Lots of bits of styrene I'm just going to chop up. I just started digging through a bunch of kits that I have, boxes and boxes of stuff. Some of this stuff people just gave me and uh, kits that I'm not going to build 
because they're incomplete or they're just leftover pieces. So I'm just going to chop them up. And some of these pieces are just old sprues from kits, Walter's kits or building kits that I've cut the pieces off. So I'm just going to chop them up and they're flying around everywhere, but we'll pick those up. One way I've built scrap piles in the past was to take a pencil sharpener and make some shavings, just like I'm doing here. And then once you get the shavings, you just put them in a bowl and throw some acrylic paint in there and then rust them up. So this is actually not a pencil sharpener for actual pencils. Stole it from my wife's makeup collection, so it's not working as efficiently as it should. All right, I'm just finishing up the second pencil, and I'll tell you what, it's definitely a workout for your hand and your forearms, and uh, not very much fun. So, I also made a mess on the workbench that I'm going to have to clean up, because you definitely don't want all that graphite like look at my hands you don't want that all over your models that you work on in the future although it'd be some good weathering powder for uh what we got going on right now but i'm going to clean it up before i forget about it at this point i've cut up a bunch of stuff probably still not enough but i got some wire mesh i've got styrene pieces of siding i've got an old gondola that was weathered um and falling apart so i just chopped it up in hundred pieces I got my pencil shavings and what I'm gonna do is put it all in this big fish food container that I emptied out and then we're gonna throw some rust-oleum paint in there spray paint I guess and shake it all up and see what happens I sprayed uh, I sprayed all the pieces with some rust-oleum couple colors the rusty primer I had didn't work out so a bit I guess for now just gonna smooth these all out after I sprayed them shook it around a lot in the can and then sprayed some more and shook it some more so it looks like pretty good coverage a little bit of color showing through but I think that'll be just fine I kept the pencil shaving separate from all the other scrap so I'm just going to throw some acrylic craft paint in here a little bit of airbrush paint a couple drops of rust add a little bit of water just kind of thin it out then I'm gonna stir them up mix them up real good in there and see how that turns out The batch of pencil shavings turned out pretty good. Just kept adding a little bit more paint to make sure everything was covered and kept stirring them to make sure they're not stacked on top of each other and uh, looks pretty good. So we're going to let those dry and then uh, put them on the pile. Moving on to the scrap pile, I just took some tin foil from the kitchen upstairs and uh, Spent the last five minutes looking for my hot glue gun, which was literally right next to me. Uh, so I got a glue gun, got the foam base, and I've got the aluminum foil. So first thing I'm going to do is crumple this stuff up like so, just to give it some character. And then by no means is this going to be anything special because all this is just going to get covered up anyways by the scrap just going to take some hot glue throw it down on the foam and then lay the foil on top of that and try not to uh, put your hand in it like I just did because it kind of burns so once the glue is on there, just press the foil onto it and then throw some more down. 
being careful not to get it on your hands. Because it hurts, trust me. And we're just gonna fold it underneath there, however it works out for you. Not super important, just wanna make sure that it's wrapped. I've seen other ways to make the base for your scrap piles. Uh, one guy was using cardboard, uh, which looked like a really good method, but I had discovered that after I already started carving this foam base. So I figured I would just go with this. Um, and he also covered his cardboard frame with used dryer sheets, which isn't out of the norm. But I've used those for soaking in plaster and then covering scenery with that. So definitely a good idea. You can check him out. I'll put his link or his YouTube on this video. And uh, pretty good uh, method for making scrap piles that look really good. So hopefully my stuff comes out to mirror his and uh, I'll be very satisfied if I do make that happen. Another one of the things I learned from his videos was to take some styrene and kind of make a base for this so that when you dump the scrap on, it has somewhere else to kind of level out. And then the base of the pile isn't as steep as it would be without that. So we're just, I've got some old styrene stuff from an old diorama that uh, puts a good use for this part right here. So as I mentioned in my other videos, that's why we model railroaders tend to never throw anything away because we are always going to find a use for uh, our scrap stuff. All right, now that the base is on, I'm just gonna carve around the back since that'll be up against the wall and you won't need any of that portion. And then we're gonna have to trim this front off a little bit so it fits between the wall and the fence that we put in. So we'll just give that a look. Go fit it in on the layout and see if it's gonna work for us or not. I decided to paint the base as well. Give it uh, some camouflage in case anything shows through. It'll help disguise the aluminum foil look. And the paint seems to stick mildly to it. So hopefully that dries good enough and uh, then we'll start gluing. And the picture doesn't do it justice right here as the coverage is a lot better than it's showing. All right, all the paint on the scrap looks like it's pretty dried up, as well as the paint that's on the aluminum foil that we have over our base. So next we're gonna do is start gluing this stuff on. So the hot glue gun is fired up again, and uh, we're just going to smear some of this hot glue where we want to put the scrap on. And once we have a little bit of coverage, we're just going to roll on some scrap.
So the rolling on method didn't really work too well since this is an oblong piece. So we're just gonna kind of press it on. Trying not to get our fingers into the hot glue. That's not very pleasant. Some of these pieces have rivets and stuff on one side. So I'm gonna try to flip them around so that those details show and look a lot better than uh, just flat styrene. I'm gonna place some of these larger pieces that I saved. Place them down individually and then we'll uh, build some scrap around them. So the hot glue seems to be working pretty good. It's got a little bit of spiderweb stuff dangling around, but I think we can work with that and uh, make that all disappear <clears throat> before we're done. Throw some of these pencil shavings on there as well for a little variation. Just working these little pieces in here wherever they kind of fit. There's those spider webs I was telling you about. So I'm not too uh, sure about this glue gun method, but it seemed to work for the other guy, so I figured I'd give it a shot. But he also did roll his stuff into the scrap pile, and maybe that helped him out. So I ended up abandoning the hot glue gun and I'm just going to throw some Elmer's glue on here. I don't think it looks too bad, uh, but definitely a lot of voids that need to be filled in. So hopefully we can make that happen. Best part though is this is in the background and uh, it's definitely not gonna be right up front where uh, people would nitpick it I guess you could say and uh, so if it's not perfect I think we can get away with it now that I'm waiting on the scrap pile to dry I just moved it over and put it in place to see what it would look like and looks pretty good minus the fact that it hasn't been weathered yet so everything just kind of blends in dull and brown so hopefully once we get some pastels on there and some rust color, it's really going to stand out the details of the scrap pile. I'm going to go ahead and start working on the second pile that I've got. And you may notice the fence looks a little longer now because I found two extra pieces that were somewhere else. So there is quite a bit of fence in the Walters kit. And I was able to extend it out a little bit longer. Got the BRC coming through here from the steel mill headed over to the Chicago yard to drop off it's like three cars before they call it a day so we'll let him go through and pick back up where we left off here's a shot of the largest of the two scrap piles the other one I've gone ahead and put some pan pastels weathering on and I'm just going to do the same for this one using a color combination of rust like bright orange some dark browns and I got black and also some lighter stuff gray kind of color and just going to brush those on and it really brings out the details and the highlights of all this junk that I've pieced together. Done my best to fill it in. So you can't really see aluminum foil. Um, it's definitely a pain. And a lot of just 
putting pieces one by one on there with a dab of Elmer's glue behind it, just hoping that it's going to stay. And so far, pretty good results. And I think it looks pretty good. I tried to keep anything that had rivets on it, tried to keep those face up. And that's definitely uh, brings out a lot of detail. So it's not just flat styrene pieces. And a lot of those flat styrene pieces, they ended up sticking to the back of other pieces, which wasn't all that bad because they just gave it something uh, like of a 3D effect. So kind of like a foundation where it would stick out from the pile and then as well help hold it up against other pieces that were already on there. But I would say if you're just relying on cut styrene flat pieces to uh, make a good scrap pile, probably not the best idea. This is the office building for Simplify Sand and Gravel. And I'm just gonna give it a coat of aged white. I think it's a good color for industrial siding such as the siding that's on this building. So we'll give it a coat and then uh, go from there and see what it looks like. And now for the office roof sections, I'm going to use some light gray and then see what that looks like and probably hit it with some metallic overcoat. Plan this week was to keep working on the gravel company. However, didn't get much work done there. I just got the building painted. Still think I'm going to do something different with the roof. That's just a light gray. and It doesn't really stand out any different than the building. So probably going to hit that with something else. But we'll fix that later. Easy, easy stuff to do. What I did get accomplished this week was the scrap piles in the background with the fence in front. I just did a little bit of base scenery in front there of the fence and behind the main line. So overall, I think they turned out pretty good. Um, maybe still room for some improvement, but I'm going to take them off the layout, take them outside, hit them with some flat coat, and then bring them back in, glue them down, and then I can work some more scrap on the base of them and really fill it in. But overall, I'm pretty satisfied how those turned out. So one thing you may have noticed is the truck scale that I added in front of the gravel company and that was a recommendation from one of the comments on my previous video so I appreciate that and uh, I think it'll go well. It also works out because it looks like I'm going to remove the shop building that was here for the BRC as it was pretty big size for the area and I think it kind of blocks the scrap piles in the back. So I'm just going to leave that open and then just assume any heavy maintenance that they do, they'll take elsewhere into Chicago and work on it there. But we'll keep the BRC headquarters building here and the crew lounge and all that stuff will be inside there. So nothing changes with that. And it's a good thing because it's already scenic a little bit. But there's an overall look at the scene, and it's going pretty well. Wanted to wrap this one up as it's already Sunday afternoon, and I'm trying to get out at least a video a week or every 10 days. So thanks for watching, and uh, be sure to check back for the next update.